Hi there, everyone. My name is Prerak Juthani. I am an MD MBA student uh, previously at Yale, and now I'm actually starting my residency at Stanford. And today I wanted to talk to you about my medical school grades because many people know that there are grades in undergrad, there are grades in high school, but not many people know that there are, are indeed grades in medical school. You'll notice that they're actually drastically different than the grades that you'd have in undergrad, but I still wanted to share these grades in the hopes of showing you the ways that you get evaluated in medical school. And I actually also did an MBA, so I'm also gonna show you some of my MBA grades. And I hope you understand the ways that you get evaluated and how they're slightly different from undergrad. And the process, I'm also hoping that you get to know me more, what my interests are, because you'll see that my grades often reflect uh, things that I'm particularly interested in. So without further ado, we'll go straight into it. We're gonna go into my preclinical grades, some of my MBA grades. We're gonna do my step one score, which is a big board exam that a lot of people in medical school have to take. We're gonna talk about my step two exam, which is another big exam that a lot of people in medical school have to take. And then we'll end with a few of my publications, which is another implicit way of being evaluated and often adds to your resume as you um, go through medical school. So let's first of all start with my preclinical studies. You'll see that the biggest way that grades are different in medical school, I went to Yale, all of the preclinical uh, subjects are actually taught on a pass-fail basis. What that means is you either pass or you don't pass. Whereas in college you had an A, B, C, D, F system. In medical school, most places adopt a pass or fail system. So you can see here that when you learn about genetics or when you learn about infectious disease or when you learn about humanities, you either get a pass or a fail. And usually if you fail it, um, you often have to retake it. Um, and so you'll see that that's kind of the general gist of my grades here. And you'll notice that I passed everything because I did graduate. Otherwise, I wouldn't have graduated. So it's important to pass. And if you fail, you take it again and pass it. And so that's my preclinical grade. And you'll notice that this is definitely probably not what you expected and very different from college. Now let's talk about the MBA. I also got an MBA, which is a Master's of Business Administration from the Yale School of Management. Here, grades are somewhat similar to what they were in undergrad, but also notice that many people, when they do grad school in the form of an MBA or even a master's, really don't care much about grades. And so the way, the way it was at Yale School of Management was that people had high honors, honors, and then I think there was a proficient, and then there was like a fail. Uh, oftentimes, the honors and high honors, um, it's the top 30% of the class, when that gets that, and then the proficient is the next 50%, and only like 10% of the class uh, would get something below a proficient and that would usually mean that they would have to like make it up um, And so it's important to understand that grades do exist in masters But oftentimes most people don't care about grades and so you'll see that this is my first um, Semester at management school. This is my second semester You'll see that I get honors in certain classes that are a little bit more quantitative uh, because I'm a, I'm a mathy person I like to substantiate things with math and I often also got quite a few proficients, if not a lot of proficients, in places where I was kind of slacking. Because you'll see that in medical school and graduate school more broadly, you can't win everything. So you often have to put your eggs in certain baskets that you particularly find interesting. And for me, that was almost always um, either science or, or quantitative subjects. So now that we've gone through preclinical and MBA grades, I now want to discuss my step one score as well as my step two score. The step one exam is the first of three exams that you have to take um, in the process of becoming a doctor. Step one was one of the most important exams in the past. Now it's actually a pass-fail exam. Before it used to be a like scored exam uh, from zero to 300, and the passing score is a 194. I got it a 252 on step one, which is, I personally thought, a great score. YouTube may have you believe otherwise because a lot of YouTubers will say like, I got a 270 and that's really amazing. But oftentimes the people who post their scores on YouTube tend to do better. Uh, but I personally think anything above 250 on step one and step two is incredible. I got a 252. I was very happy with that. Um, and that was my pers personal score. And I think it was anywhere between like 85th percentile to 90, 93rd percentile based on like standard deviation. So pretty good for me. I was happy with it. I try to like, not to get too bogged down in numbers, but just know that that was my step one score. Step two CK score is another exam, and now that step one is pass fail, step two CK has taken on a renewed significance, and this is primarily because if you only have step two CK as your numerical score, that's the only way to compare one med student to another, because everyone else just has pass or fail. So on my step two, I got a 259, which I think was around 85th to 90th percentile, 
depending on standard deviation. Again, I was particularly pretty proud of that. I was aiming for a 260, didn't get it. But again, as you'll see um, when, at the end of this video, when I discuss what I've learned from the mechanism of, of evaluation, at the end of the day, it's all about competing against yourself and trying to get better. If you try to compete against other, you'll burn out very, very fast. I wanna end this video by talking a bit about publications. If you're in medicine or in science more broadly, uh, these exam scores often don't mean anything because by, by, by showing you're competent, that's just the, the base of the pyramid. More importantly, people wanna see you understand the material, can apply it and take it one step further. And so you'll see that publications are one of the best ways to show that. If you haven't already, I want you to I want to encourage you to go to Google Scholar and make a profile there because that's often a great way for you to keep track of your publications. Throughout medical going into medical school, I only had one publication coming out. I think I have around seven or eight. And the biggest reason for that is because I pivoted from doing bench research, which is hardcore pipetting, to doing more clinical research, which is usually a bit more relevant to medical school. And I also published a few papers related to COVID-19, uh, which I was really happy about. And so you'll see that I actually have my publications here and I actually am gonna show you a bit of my CV where I've listed them. You should always list publications on your CV because one, they help your resume and two, they often show people what you're interested in studying. In medical school, I was really interested in medical education, innovation in medical education through technology such as YouTube and, and more importantly, uh, clinical research. I was really interested in understanding the ways that people were doing, uh, whether that be in COVID-19 or other diseases. And that's kind of been translated into my research. What have I learned through all of these means of evaluation? At the end of the day, it's important to be competent. It is very actually important to get good grades, especially when you're in high school and in, when you're in undergrad because you want to get into great medical school. When you get into medical school, you realize that most grades go out the window and it's all about studying things that you like to study. You have already proven that you enjoy science and you've already proven that you know when push comes to shove, you'll be able to study. But now show me that you know how to learn for the sake of learning. And I think that was one of the biggest wake-up calls in medical school. They really didn't care if you passed, uh, if you got an A plus or if you got a C. They just cared you cared enough to get by. And then, more importantly, when standardized tests do come around, it's important to do well on them. But remember that they're not make or break. I could have easily done worse on many of these exams. And it's easier to make them up because there are different ways to show that you know the material. And to this day, I can guarantee you, um, a lot of the people who I admire a lot in clinical medicine often are not the ones who got 270s because you believe it or not, 270 on step one or step two may not be the people who know how to be great physicians and connect with others. So just remember that your score doesn't define you and by no means does it say anything about how good of a physician you'll be. So hopefully this provided you more insight into who I am as a physician and uh, and also increased transparency in the way that you're graded in medical school. If you like this video, drop a like. Comment, share, uh, let me know if you have future ideas for videos, and I'll see you very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.